All right, well, if you're with us uh, today, Romans chapter 10, we'll be looking at verses 18 through 19, and uh, we're right in the midst of the book of Romans, uh, probably one of the most important books uh, in the Bible. You know, just a reminder, this book is 66 book books written by 40 different authors, right, the, over the course of about 1,200 years, and has one message. One message points to Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is looking forward to the coming Messiah. The New Testament is looking back at the Messiah. And just amazing. This is God's word. Paul says in, to, to his protege Timothy, he says, all scripture, all scripture, maybe at home right now, you want to repeat this verse with me. Just to be reminded, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable to all men. Listen, it's all God breathed. And today in Romans chapter 10, we're going to pick up in verse 18. Paul says, but I say, listen, Paul had just got done saying in verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He's telling God's people, listen, even to the Jewish nation, no matter how far you think somebody is from God, get the word of God to them. I know many of you guys will send out little Bible verses, send them to your friends, your family. Point them in the direction of a, of a Bible teaching. Maybe even today you want to forward the devotion to somebody that they could hear God's word and realize God has something to say. He, he can cut right through all the lies in our generation and cuts right through and gets right to the human heart. And he opens eyes, he opens heart, and he changes destinies. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our job as God's kids is to get the word out, man. Get the word out. And Paul says, verse 18, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed, he says. Their, so- their sound has gone out to all the earth. You know, the word of God has gone out into this whole world. You know, there's so many wonderful missionaries that go to these countries all around the world to bring the good news of Jesus. And I pray for them. I hope you pray for them. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Verse 19, but I say, did Israel not know? You know, when uh, Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem, the prophet Micah 5.2 had already prophesied this. You know, uh, that Bethlehem from there would be born the Messiah. And Bethlehem was a, was a small distance from Jerusalem. You know, when, when all the miraculous even, you know, um, things you could see in the sky and all that was going on at the birth of Christ... You know, the high priests and such, they, some of them knew this information. They knew Micah 5, 2. They knew what the prophecies said. They, they were just indifferent. They were just eh, apathetic. I don't know if I want to take the trip to see if the Messiah is there. I hear all this stuff. and They, they just were lazy. And Paul here is saying, listen, but I say, did Israel not know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. What is God's word saying here? Uh, God is telling us, and he's speaking primarily about the Jewish nation, how God, even in the Jewish nation's faithlessness towards him, God will be faithful to the Jewish people. He's saying here, listen, that he was going to provoke them to jealousy. How would he do that? It's by you and me. It's by any non-Jew who has a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, the Jewish people today, they'll, they'll wear the prayer shawl. They'll have all the laws they'll try to follow on the Sabbath. They, they'll do all these meticulous things thinking they're keeping the law. And then you got some Gentile, some Italian, some, you know, some black or some Spanish or Asian or anyone, right? And, and we're, just, we're just people who have been forgiven by Jesus. And we know God better than they do. We do. Because we come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in our time of need. We come not because of our good works, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. You know, and I'll close with this story today, you know, how God provokes them to jealousy. Uh, Me and a couple brothers years ago had gone into one of the Hasidic communities in our area, and we brought the gospel to them. You know, we had all these papers with Isaiah 53, Psalm 22 in, in Yiddish, in Hebrew, and then translated to English. 
and we would pass those out. And, and one of them you was sharing with, passed it out, and he looked at, you know, I'll never forget this. He looked at me. He was a Jewish man. He had the hat on. He had the curls, the whole nine yards, the special outfit. And he said, where is your prayer shawl? He, he touched my shirt, too. And I was like, oh, you're unclean now. But uh, he touched my shirt. He said, where's your prayer shawl? He goes, where's your head covering? You know, he said, you don't know God. He said, you don't know God. And he walked away from me. He provoked me a little bit in that moment. So I kind of walked briskly, but spiritually after him. And I kind of touched his shoulder, turned him around. And I looked at him in the face and I said, listen to me. I said, I know your God better than you do. I know your God better than you do. And listen, we do. We know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob better than most of the, the nation of Israel. But remember, Zechariah the prophet says, Jesus will return, and they'll say to him, where did you get those wounds on your wrists and your feet, Messiah? And he'll say, I received them in the house of my friends. And they will be saved. They'll realize that their Messiah had come, and it was Yeshua, Yeshua ben Yosef, Jesus, son of Joseph, is Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus is the Messiah. And Father, today we pray. May we provoke others to jealousy with the beautiful and wonderful walk with you that we get to enjoy. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.